to our service. Whether you are members of Second Valley Easton, visitors or joining us online, we are glad to have you as part of our worship. Crash facilities are available during this service. Youth and Children's Day will be held next Sunday, the 25th of June at 11.30 a.m. This will be followed by a congregational barbecue for friends, family, families and neighbours. The walking group will meet for their last walk of the season on Tuesday the 27th of June when we will walk in the King's Coronation Garden. We will meet in the church car park at 10 a.m. Everyone will be made most welcome. United Summer Services will be held in Second Valley Easton at 11 o'clock in July and in August in First Valley Easton at 11 a.m. Every Sunday is an opportunity to support each other in prayer. Please let us know who you would like us to pray for by filling in one of our request cards or speaking to one of our elders or our minister. These are today's announcements for your consideration and prayers. <clears throat> the kingdom of heaven has come near. These words are not just a proclamation, but an invitation. The kingdom of heaven has come near to you, as God has drawn near to us in Jesus Christ. The kingdom of heaven has come near, and you are welcome in God's household. Let us worship God. Let us pray. Almighty God, in the beginning, your love was generously poured out in creation and continues to pour out upon it today. And that love has been revealed most fully in Jesus, who took on flesh and blood, who lived a simple life among us. He was generous to all who came to him in need. He lived a life devoted to your law, and yet helped us discover how to live fully within the law of love. <clears throat> Jesus taught his followers day by day. He taught them in word, but more often through his actions. We, your followers, continue to live as you have taught us, listening to your word and acting generously. 
We're sorry for the times when we have failed to heed your word or put it into action. We ask for your forgiveness for those times when our words are silence, our actions or inactions have caused hurt or harm. In your mercy, as we gather together, hear our prayer, and may we receive the forgiveness you freely offer. Help us to hear the words of forgiveness. Daughter, your sins are forgiven. Son, your sins are forgiven. Help us to accept them and to continue on seeking to be more faithful, more generous people serving in the world we live. And together we pray as God's people, taught by Jesus to ever pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Girls and boys, do you want to come and join me up at the front? I know most of you have been up here already this morning. Well, it was nice to see you all up this bit this morning when you're singing, and we're looking forward to it next week. Any more? Everybody boiling? It's quite warm, isn't it? No, you're not. Oh, cold soul. Hi there. I know you're all lucky you're all in shorts. And then you get to go out of church and it'll be nice and cool over in the hall. Well, do you text ever? No. You don't text or somebody you've seen text? Sometimes you see this in a text message or a WhatsApp or whatever. What does the it means? Love. Now, here's a big question. What does love mean? What do you think? What might you think? When somebody loves you. Yeah, that's good. Anything else? Lots of kind things together. Lots of kind things together. Are you going to say something? Like you? What else? Um, kindness. kindness. Over. Um, kindness too. Kindness too. Anything else you think when we say the word love, what it means? Any ideas? What do you think? Loving. Loving. Anything else? It's a small word. But it's a really big meaning. Anything else? Could be sweet. Oh, mum and dad ever sweet to each other? <laughs> when your dad's behaved. Anything else we think? What about the grown-ups? What do you think of? What does love mean? Sharing. 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 Yeah. Anything? Caring. Anything else? Should we ask the elders? It's a small word with a really big meaning. Well, we talk about it all the time. What were you going to say? Liking. Liking, yeah. That's sometimes a difficult one, <laughs> isn't it? And one more? Joy. Joy, that's a nice word, isn't it? That's a good one to have. Joy, love, sharing, kindness, sweetness. <gasps> There's lots and lots. And you know what? In church, there, what did you want to say? Yeah. Loving. In church, we use that word all the time. We say that God loves us and that we should love each other. But maybe we need to stop sometimes and think what this small little word actually means when it's a great big thing. Because you know what? There's going to be lots and lots and lots of things you can say. But here's one that's really important to remember. Okay? Here's one part of loving. But what love is, is that it's really important. Now the Bible has a verse it says, while we were yet still sinners, Christ died for us. Now, that's quite grown-up language. 
But here's what love also is, the Bible tells us. Love isn't just kind and sweet and caring and sharing. Love forgives. Now, did you ever mess up or do something you shouldn't? Did you ever break something in the house? Oh, what are the things you've broken? Are you allowed to tell us? <laughs> Have you broken stuff? TV. The TV? <laughs> That's a bit expensive. What, you've broken everything, have you? No, I broke the table. You broke the table? Oh, are you jumping on it? No. Oh, yeah, anything else got broken? Connor, dare we ask? A, a plate. A plate? Oh, mum's nodding her head there. Do you know what? Sometimes, now it might be an accident and we inadvertently break the TV, or a table, <laughs> or a plate. Or maybe we mess up and get grumpy or angry and say an unkind word. Or maybe we say something we shouldn't. Did your mum and dad say, go away, I never want to see you again? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're still here with us. Do you know what love is? Love forgives because even when we mess up, even if we do something wrong, even if we make a mistake, love forgives. And that's a really important part to remember as well. Because when we say God loves us, it also means that God forgives us. And God loves everybody because even if we look at the news, and there's some horrible stories we maybe sometimes hear mum or dad listening to on the TV. God still loves the world. God still loves people. God still loves us. And the Bible says, it doesn't matter what you do, it will never stop God loving you. And that's what we mean when we talk about love in church. A small little word with a great big meaning. And it's a fantastic word because it means that no matter what mistakes or things we make, that we still know that we're loved and cherished. And the good thing too is, you know what? If a friend or somebody in our family or somebody else does something wrong, well, to be really loving is, then we can forgive them too and make the world better. Small word, big impact. You're loved, so let's make sure we love others as well. Thank you for listening. Connor, you're going to teach a song. Good morning, everybody. How are we all this morning? Are you all rested up from your Children's Day practice? Good. Now, I'm going to really throw a curveball at you this morning. I have another new song for you to try this morning. This is called Shine from the Inside Out, and there's actions in the verses now. They're not too hard, so don't be panicking. So this is our words. Shine from the inside out that the world will see you live in me. And we'll sing that twice. So I'll give you a wee play through of the tune. And we'll do that just for each bit of the song. And then we'll be try it all together. Shine from the inside out that the world will see you live in me. Shine from the inside out that the world will see you live in me and we'll hear that bit plenty in the song that's our big chorus so we've got that two or three times this is our next part this is the part we've got the action so we've got you know me you love me so fill me and send me and then we're back into the chorus so we'll play this little bit and then we'll try the chorus again okay. You know me, and let's practice the actions. You love me, so fill me, and send me to shine from the inside out, that the world will see you live in me. Shine from the inside out, that the world will see you live in me. Now, our last part before we go into one more chorus, we're going to have to really try because this moves really fast. So we've got know me, love me, fill me, send me. Know me, love me, fill me, send me. This is well, I'm not doing these at the front. This is tricky. 
Know me, love me, fill me, send me. And then we're back into the chorus. So shall we give it a wee go and see how we get on? We'll try this little bit and then we'll have a go through the whole song. So you ready for the actions? One, two, three, four. Know me, love me, fill me, send me. Know me, love me, fill me, send me. To shine. And straight back into the chorus. So will we give it all a wee go and see how we got on? All right, guys, invite the congregation to stand as well. Shine from the inside out that the world will see you live in me. Shine from the inside out that the world will see you live in me, you know me, you love me, so fill me and send me to shine from the inside out that the world will see. You live in me, to shine from the inside out that the world will see. You live in me, know me, love me, fill me, send me. Know me, love me, fill me, send me to shine from the inside out that the world will see. You live in me, shine from the inside out that the world will see. You live in me. Well done. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you. Have fun on Sunday Club. We'll see you later. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord appeared to Abraham near the great trees of Mamre while he was sitting at the entrance to his tent in the heat of the day. Abraham looked up and saw three men standing nearby. When he saw them, he hurried from the entrance of his tent to meet them and bowed low to the ground. He said, If I find favour in your eyes, my Lord, do not pass your servant by. Let a little water be brought, and then you may all wash your feet and rest under this tree. Let me get you something to eat, so you can be refreshed and then go on your way, now that you have come to your servant. Very well, they answered, do as you say. So Abraham hurried into the tent to Sarah. Quick, he said, get three says of the finest flour and knead it and bake it some bread. Then he ran to the herd and selected a choice, tender calf, and gave it to a servant who hurried to prepare it. He then brought some curds and milk and the calf that had been prepared and set these before them. While they ate, he stood near them under a tree. Where is your wife, Sarah? they asked him. There in the tent, he said. Then one of them said, I will surely return to you about this time next year and Sarah, your wife, will have a son. Now Sarah was listening at the entrance to the tent, which was behind him. Abraham and Sarah were already very old, and Sarah was past the age of childbearing. So Sarah laughed to herself as she thought, After I'm worn out, my Lord is old, will I now have this pleasure? Then the Lord said to Abraham, why does Sarah laugh and say, Will I really have a child now that I am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? I will return to you at the appointed time next year, and Sarah will have a son. Sarah was afraid, so she lied and said, I did not laugh. But he said, Yes, you did laugh. Now the Lord was gracious to Sarah, as he had said, and the Lord did for Sarah what he had promised. 
Sarah became pregnant and bore a son to Abraham in his old age at the very time God had promised him. Abraham gave the name Isaac to the son Sarah bore him. When his son Isaac was eight days old, Abraham circumcised him as God commanded him. Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born to him. Sarah said, God has brought me laughter and everyone who hears about this will laugh with me. Thanks be to God. Last week and this week we've been thinking about our calling as Christians. As Christ commissioned the disciples to go out into the world to bring hope, as the story of Abraham and Sarah, who are commissioned themselves, called to go out away from home into the world, what is that like for you? And what does it mean? Here is a reflective prayer to think about our call to go out and to meet others in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Loving God, as we look back over the last week, we wonder, where did we see you in a stranger? Who did we share a meal with which revealed something of you? When did you reveal something to us that made us laugh? What did we offer of ourselves to someone we did not know before? God, help us to learn from our interactions with others, especially those we do not know. God, encourage us to offer generous hospitality and friendship to strangers in this coming week. God, challenge our thinking about how we speak and act with others. God, guide us to the people you long for us to meet and welcome them into our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Men of faith, rise up and sing of the great and glorious King. Are strong when you feel weak in your brokenness complete. Shout to the north and the south, sing to the east and the west. Jesus is Savior to all, Lord of heaven and earth. Rise up. is 
Savior to all, Lord of heaven and earth. A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus sends out the twelve. Jesus called his twelve disciples to him and gave him authority to drive out impure spirits and to heal every disease and illness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, who was called Peter, and his brother Andrew. James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. Philip and Bartholomew, Philip and Bartholomew Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector. James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus. Simon the Zealot, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Do not go among the Gentiles or enter any town of the Samaritans. Go rather to the lost sheep of Israel. As you go, proclaim this message. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Heal those who are ill, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons. Freely you have received freely give. Thanks be to God. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. of God, born in his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight. Faces of pressure now burst from my side. Angels descending bring from above echoes of This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Let's pray. Lord God, we dare now to ask you to speak to us by your Spirit. May Scripture come alive for us and grant us the courage to listen. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It began with a question to a young boy in 2005 in the streets of India. What do you want most in the world? The boy replied, a pencil. That answer surprised Adam Braun, who wrote that he watched a wave of possibility wash over the boy's face. Braun was a student on a study semester in India, backpacking across dozens of countries. And from then on, he started to hand out pens and pencils wherever he went. And then in 2008, with a deposit of just $25, Braun with others 
linked into a network of local schools, founded the Pencils of Promise charity. To date, they've built 550 schools and thousands of young people have been provided with educational opportunities they might never have had, and it has transformed their lives, bringing equality to girls and boys, bringing opportunity for them. And it began with a pencil. How do you transform the world? Sometimes it's with the smallest thing. Sometimes it might be with something you have, but it begins because you give it away. Today our gospel speaks of those sent out to transform the world. They're being sent, commissioned to bring hope and healing. And Jesus concludes his pep talk with, Freely you have received, freely give. Generosity was to be a crowning principle for their mission. Open to the generosity of others, for they were to take nothing, but also ready to give of all they had received. A practical outworking of what Jesus had taught them of loving God and loving your neighbor and you are here today because of that mission. Generosity has always been transformative. That ancient story of Abraham and Sarah, cherished as part of the story of the birth of the nation of Israel, holds generosity at the heart of it. God turns up in the form of a stranger and Abraham responds with generosity. Basically, if you look at the footnote in your pew Bible, saying that it was the effect of uh, 16 kilograms of flour is being asked to be baked. Now, I don't know if you've got much flour in your cupboard. Perhaps we have to remember the even greater generosity of Sarah, who didn't hit him over the head with her mortar, but got on with the actual hard work of baking a vast feast. God turns up and generosity pours forth, bringing entirely new possibilities into the world. Abraham and Sarah laughing at the absurdity of it all. How much has your own life been transformed by generosity? If you remember Alex Wimberley, the leader of Corrymeela, who preached here the other year, his father, the late Reverend Dr. Bill Wimberley, wrote about the generosity at the heart of the Abraham story. He said in a sermon, what we have here is Abraham breaking out in generosity because God is on his doorstep, not counting the cost, not worrying about the bottom line, instead letting loose with what he had. Think of the atmosphere and generosity in which we have bloomed. Think of your father or mother or grandparents or teacher or someone who needed the dough that enriched your life, poured out their concern, their time, their resources, their spirit, their personality upon you. Think how generously your spouse has cared for you over the years. Think how generous with patience or with guidance an employer may have been. Think what generosity built this church and maintains it still. Think how each of us lives largely upon the largesse of someone else. What a wonderful thing generosity is. It is so much more godlike than careful calculation. God coming through the flap of our tent signals generosity and calls it forth from us. And as Jesus summed it up there, freely you have been given. Freely give. Our world needs change. And we can hope for the large, the spectacular, the heroic. And that's why we have to place so much responsibility in the hands of government to entrust them to those giant projects that the world must undertake. Not always faithful to it, but let's best not talk about that today. But instead, our reading from Matthew underscores a Christian virtue, essential, but not large, spectacular, rarely heroic, or great. It doesn't require power or great wealth. 
generosity. Jesus calls us to go into this world that needs change, that needs hope and healing with generosity. We are to perform acts of generosity, welcoming the stranger, offering a cup of cold water, giving as we've been given to, because in Jesus, that is what has been done to us. Abraham is called to go into the world, a priesthood of believers of a nation. And these disciples commissioned first to be sent just to the people of Israel, fulfilling that call to Abraham, are then commissioned to become a blessing to others and to come to us. Jesus reached out to us Gentiles and included us in the kingdom of heaven. We were all strangers, outsiders, and we have been brought into the family of God. And now, show the same generosity, says Jesus. It might feel a bit abstract being a Christian. Here you come to church on a Sunday, we read our Bible readings, we listen to a sermon, we have our prayers, and then we go home. But those words may linger in our minds. Follow me, says Jesus. Go. And what does that mean day by day? Every day, you have something practical you can do. You can show generosity. Giving, forgiving, helping, holding. Small acts of giving up that reveal God's love in the world. But generosity isn't just an action It's also an attitude. It's estimated that around about the fourth century, the churches in Rome were feeding an estimated 20,000 people each week. It was remarked on by non-Christians about the generosity of Christians. But the church succeeded in part because it presented the world a living example of a counter cultural life. It looked different and acted different. And the attitude of those gathered in worship wasn't to lock the doors to strangers or greedily hang on to their resources conditioned to fear. They were obedient to Jesus, not the headlines of the day. They saw those around them in need as brothers and sisters to be in Christ. Up to 500 people are still missing from a migrant boat that sank off Greece, the UN has reported. 100 of them are said to have been children. Politics and the media will continue to have all sorts of things to say about the issue of migration. But tomorrow will begin Refugee Week. And next Sunday, our children will be leading our service leading our prayers and readings, teaching us. Spoiler alert, the theme is how each child is created in the image of God. So too was everyone on that boat. Generosity helps us see that God cherished image in others because we have learnt that this is how God looks at us, how God looks at our children how God looks at all people. Tullamore Presbyterian Church was in the news in the Republic the other week. They've been recognized as a church of sanctuary for their ongoing work in welcoming and supporting asylum seekers, refugees, and those who have settled from different countries. Their minister was interviewed, the Reverend Hayes, as a church work amongst the refugee, asylum seeker, and immigrant community has become a much more intentional activity for us than simply a byproduct of reaching out to our general community as we're called to do as Christians. And many have also become part of our church community too. You can be intentional in your generosity. Now, you might not think you have a testimony you could share from the front of church talking about your faith in a public place. You might even faint at the thought of being asked to come up to the front here and talk about what it means to you to be a Christian. But you can give a reason for why you give. You can speak to why you share. Say you are doing it. 
Because Jesus has given you everything. Because you have been loved. And you are being obedient to his call to go into the world with good news. That's a story we can all tell. Amen. God willing, we worship God with our generosity. Let's pray. Generous God, you have showered us with extravagant gifts of people, time, and talents. May we be generous in our giving also. Receive what we offer today, not just our money, for indeed we offer our very selves to you. Take and use us in the service of building your kingdom here and now. Loving God, you delight in creation. We are thankful for the life you have given us, for the people who welcome us and invite us to live alongside them. Many of your people down through the millennia have extended generosity in your name and have sought to serve you by serving those before them. Our generation are facing a time when some are encouraging us to fear our neighbor to exile the stranger and dismiss the widow. We are facing a crisis of natural resources, a growing demand for utilities and technologies that we cannot sustain. We are being encouraged to ignore the chaos of our climate and what it may mean for future generations. God, help us all to open our eyes and ears to those who are trying to stop humanity from plunging into chaos Help us to listen to a younger generation so much more aware. And God, help us all to return to your values of welcome and hospitality. May we seek to use our skills and resources, our buildings and people, to offer a warm welcome, to feed the hungry, to assist the homeless, to visit those bound in their home, to educate ourselves and others to what needs to change for the world to be set free and find healing, that we would work together to bring about real change now. So in this week ahead, Lord God, as we think of Christ's call upon our lives and commission to send us out to share the good news of Jesus Christ, help us to be attentive to those moments and opportunities to share good news and to be good news. In Jesus' name, amen. Lord, the light of your love is shining in the midst of the darkness shining jesus light of the world shine upon us set us free by the truth you now bring us shine on me shine on me shine jesus shine fill this land with the 
Father's glory, please, Spirit, please set our hearts on fire. Flow, river, flow, flood the nations with grace and mercy. Send forth the word, Lord, and let fair be light. So our faces display your likeness, ever changing from glory to glory. King of kings, may our lives tell your story. Shine on me, shine on me. Shine, Jesus, shine, fill this land with the Father's glory, please, Spirit, please, set our hearts on fire. Flow, river, flow, flood the nations with grace and mercy. Go now, friends, you have received. Now freely go and share. Go now, having been fed and refreshed. Go now and share the good news of God's extravagant generosity to all. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, rest and abide with each one of you now and always. And all God's people said, Amen.